Now we're ready to talk about the great contributions made by positional number system in building our number sense. The most important one is it helps us understand really large quantities. Large quantity often seems overwhelming because of our working memory limitation, since most of us can only hold seven items in our working memory. When there are only a few items, it's fairly easy. But when there are more items, such as eight, my working memory can't capture and process all of them individually at the same time. So I have to count. So what does counting do? Say I'm able to identify immediately three bars without counting. So I put that in my working memory. But then I say three in my head. Now guess what happens? Once you assign individual name to these three bars, they no longer exist as three individuals. Instead, they exist as one entity named three. So three items become one item. And then I keep counting one by one, each time saying out the names: four, five, six, seven. New bonding happens so that an old object merges with the one to form a new object. So yes, there are many individual bars, but in my working memory, I'm dealing with only two things: a seven and a one. And then by saying eight, I make these two objects into one object again. This way, eight bars exist as one object. So counting is a tool to continuously merge two objects into one, in order to accommodate our limited working memory. Each time progressing one more to the next quantity and name it accordingly, we are sweeping the larger quantity into one individual object. That becomes the stepping stone to understand the next one. Gradually, this way we understand larger quantity. Because we can always say to ourselves, "Oh, it's just one more than the last one," but there is a limit in terms of how far you can go learning new quantity this way. Because you have to keep coming up with these random names, memorizing those names will push your memory to the limit. So let's see the solution for this. Now, since we already know the following names, let's place them here. Is there a pattern? Why the same word "teen" appear all over the place? It is referring to a structure of ten here. Without this structure guiding us, we would have assigned random and crazy names like this. But with this structure in the way we organize the quantity, the names we assign would also bear a structure, referring to the name of the bundle, the number of those bundles, and any residual. But of course, we prefer more intimate names. That's why, for relatively small number. We're able to concatenate these several parts into one word. Then the bundle of ten becomes our new entity. Adding one more bundle named thirty, meaning three ten. If we add items fewer than a bundle, just imply so in the names. Keep adding till we have a full bundle. Now just name it as four bundles. By treating each individual bundle as one object, this bigger bundle offers us. Bigger stride in making large quantities, until we hit ten objects again. Time to bundle up into an even bigger one, and give it a name which we call hundred. By implying the number of such bundle, here is the name for this number. It is through this continuous way of sweeping smaller bundles into larger ones that we manage to understand what an even larger number means. Counting offers a step-by-step -step approach of assimilating quantity one by one to help us understand the next quantity. But just like following detailed GPS instructions in a very narrow focus manner, where you only pay attention to one step at a time, after a few steps you will be lost in those details. You won't have a good understanding about where you are. Positional number system offers us a consistent way of aggregating details into new entity that becomes our new one. That new one becomes the baseline to approach bigger and bigger number, which would be unimaginable otherwise. And it can keep going this way. So this is exactly what positional number system is doing: organizing and aggregating details. The resulting positions will have different order of significance, 
making it easier to understand what a symbol represents. For example, given a large and multi-digit number, I won't be able to remember each digit. But once we notice the decreasing significance of each one, we can easily approximate it by ignoring the smaller ones. For an even larger number with nine digits, most of us will have trouble remembering all the nine digits. But that doesn't matter. Most of the time, we can ignore those least important ones. Therefore, nine items become only a few. The original overwhelming information gets condensed into simple form, easier for our brain to digest. Besides understanding what a quantity means, another key aspect of number sense includes the sense of smallness and largeness between two quantities. Let's see how Arabic numerals and Roman numerals differ in building such number sense. Let's compare 87 and 100 in both formats. Here's the list for the meaning of those Roman symbols. If you don't remember, we can immediately know which one is greater in the Arabic form. But in the Roman format, we will have to digest each symbol, understand what each one represents, aggregate them before deciding the magnitudes. The reason we're so fast in comparing the Arabic format is not just because we're so used to them. For whatever crazy two numbers I'm comparing, I don't even need to know what each symbol represents. The length of the symbols contain information about the magnitudes. I can tell almost directly which one is longer or shorter, and that's enough for me to compare. But in the Roman case, the symbol length doesn't tell us much. You have to constantly juggle through the meaning of individual symbols to make sense of it. But in the Arabic number case, only when the two numbers have exactly the same length will I ever need to take a closer look at individual symbols. We are visual animals. Visual message is the easiest to digest, as compared to the abstract symbols. The telemark's way of recording quantity preserves that visual dimension of information, but of course, it becomes overwhelming. The Arabic way of recording using abstract symbols makes information more compact. In the meantime, the length of the symbols can also tell us something about their magnitudes. For most cases, when we are comparing different numbers, our vision is evoked first. This is the fastest way to compare numbers. Only when their lengths are at par will we ever need to involve the more complicated symbol process, which is more time-consuming. Not only this organized way of aggregating details helps us build our number sense, but it also corresponds to a systematic way of crunching symbols. The resulting symbols are compact and clear in conveying information, and also bear the internal structures that can be taken apart and put together for computing. This has huge implications on computation. As we will see more details in the next few sections about the nature of computing. Specifically, we're going to see why two plus three equals to five.